My name is Alex, aka Your Bedside Angel, and this is the first recording of what I'm calling <laughs> Dreamer's License. This is meant to be sort of a audio journal slash blog. Um, there should be a transcription available somewhere. Thank you, future Alex, <laughs> for doing that. But really, this is supposed to be a recording of my thoughts throughout the next year. Right now, I'm recording this on December 29th at 4.52 p.m. And it's supposed to be out, like, I guess January. <laughs> Hopefully first or second, I don't know. So I don't know if you're listening to this on a streaming service or an actual blog, or you're reading this, but this is meant to be a sort of capsule for where I'm at and where I will be in the new year. As a backstory, I used to create content, I still do here and there, under um, Just Alex Today. And I previously had a podcast, Tap and Tap Out. Shout out to the <laughs> listeners of that. Um, loved Tap and Tap Out, um, pop culture, mental health, all the good things. And it was beautiful and it was a way for me to work through a lot of present things in myself, but also promote mental health awareness and connect it with pop culture and make it accessible. It was really cool. Um, it's not over, it's always, it's always alive, it's always gonna be there. <laughs> but um, I more recently decided to transition to a more, I guess, artistic approach to my content creation next year. It's kind of a challenge to myself, um, which is kind of the root of, of this media as well, um, Dreamers License, because uh, as you can tell, this episode is titled License to Dream, which is kind of the home base um, for the conversations I want to have to myself, but also other people. And as you can tell, there's a picture of me on the cover, surprise, <laughs> me as a child. And it was really funny when I remember I had that picture because I don't remember much about that time, personally. But I think that's kind of the beauty of it, you know? Like, <laughs> it was too good to, to remember, I guess. You know, I was really young. It was just kind of like, I was just free. And I don't think growing up, I really considered myself a dreamer. I was really, like, goal-oriented, I would say. And by that, I mean goals have like an end to them and dreams I think are more open-ended right and I feel like I was really conditioned by nature of society and my family my own personality um lent me to being someone that really focused on making ends meet whether that be emotionally academically creatively, right? Like, I'm gonna set a goal, I'm gonna visualize it, I'm gonna complete it. And if I did have dreams, they were more like wishful thinking, I would say. Like, okay, it'd be nice if that happened, or that'd be cool. But I, I wouldn't like set my heart on dreams. And I think maybe the few times that I did, I don't know if they were <laughs> universally praised or accepted, so I knew I was really good at setting a goal and getting it done, having the work ethic to do that. So that's what I focused on. And I do feel like getting into college, right now I'm in grad school, hopefully finishing this year, um, 2024. But in college, I remember kind of finding a way to start to subvert that through my creative goals, because they were naturally more, more open-ended than an academic goal or a goal that's like financial or whatever. And I feel like my Just Alex Today content helped me do that because I was opening up my work and my heart to community and to an audience in a way that wasn't always up to me, like how it would be perceived. And that was really refreshing for me. But even still, I found a way to make it really calculated and tap and tap out, for example, was very, very calculated. I had each segment planned out and I would, there was a lot of, you know, freedom in it, in the segments, but 
I always had a, a heart of what I wanted to reach every episode and it was always a thing. And last year I did a book club and that was also very calculated. If you're part of that, I had each chapter planned out and written down in a syllabus and it was very, you know, very, and I love, trust me, there's a part of me that, that is me, you know? However, for the past couple months, as I've been kind of taking a creative hiatus, I've been thinking that it would be cool to move into something a little more abstract. And I feel like my Bedside Angel platform blog helps me to do that well because there is no real end goal to it. And it's really rooted in a curiosity, which I think is really exciting because there is a lot of, authenticity in tapping into like what you don't know and being comfortable with the uncomfortable so hopefully that made any kind of sense <laughs> but i say all this to say i'm hoping that this at least monthly audio submission to y'all and to myself serves as a kind of capsule for the journey that i'm on to give myself more permission to dream and what that looks like for me and so each month will be a certain theme. This month is License to Dream. Next month could be License to Blank. Y'all can guess what it might be for February. I won't spoil it, but it might be obvious. Um, so looking at this month coming, January, it's also my birthday, which is really sweet. But um, looking at January, looking at having a License to Dream, like I said, having dreams was a little foreign to me. Um, I grew up on the island, so I don't know, it's like, I knew things were possible, but it wasn't like always apparent to me how things would ever happen. And so I definitely like held space for life paths that weren't necessarily obvious, but I didn't know how to set a path towards them. And I think in that way, I don't think I was able to be a part of my dreams in the way that I want to now versus dreams being something totally out of my control, right? Which I think in the highest form of a dream life, it's that's true, right? Like going from here to the top of the top of what your life could be is not gonna be fully within your control. We live in a society that involves millions of other people who have a say in what they wanna do and how it affects your life and you know, how much of your journey really is up to you, right? But I think recently I've been coming into the understanding that energetically I can be a little more invested in this process. And this, and part of that is the permission you give yourself to have a dream, right? And so for me, what that looks like is a lot of like affirmation work. I'm actually reading um, The Artist's Way right now. And it's a very old but popular book. And it's actually like a workbook. I didn't realize it was like a workbook, but <laughs> it's a workbook. So I mean, I'd be working in that book. And I'm on like week two as of right now. And it's reintroducing affirmations again as well in this chapter. And it's been really, really good. Every morning um, I've been like journaling. And at the end of the journaling, they invite you to like, write your affirmations that, you, that are speaking to you and even the freedom that that's giving me has been really comforting and i really encourage people to get into <laughs> affirmations if you haven't already but um yeah that's been really uplifting for me even just start my day with something that's encouraging and very direct using my using i using these like first person words every day has been really helpful. So I was thinking of an affirmation that would go well with this idea. And what came to mind was, I am an invaluable part of the process I am trusting. I am an invaluable part of the process I am trusting. Um, why this came up for me is because in chasing your dreams or even creating a dream, I think there's this idea of trusting the process. and. Oh, something big with my therapist. <laughs> Shout out to you. But something she always used to tell me, like her finishing thought, a lot of sessions was trusting the process. And it was frustrating all the time, and it still is, because there was a meme recently of like, does, does the process know that I'm trusting it? You know? And 
I think if we materialize trust in the process too much, it can come across like, like we have no part in that, you know, like sit back and, and watch it happen, right? And, and to an extent, many times that is true, but I do think we forget that we are, we're a part of that process. And, and not only that we're a part of it, but we're actually a very important part of the process, getting to that destination that we have. And giving yourself the permission to dream is also the permission that you, you are worth your dreams and you're worth that time, the energy, the effort it takes. Sometimes in the, you know, the, the work you're doing, but also in the waiting when the work is done and you're waiting on to hear back from something or whatever. I'm speaking really abstractly for this one, but that's the nature of this right now. This is a very abstract idea because I'm still making up dreams, to be honest with you. And there's the permission to pursue a dream, but the permission to also create them. And like I said, I think I've been so goal-oriented all my life. I would like to get better at opening myself up to the possibility of things that I don't know the end of. And I'm really excited what that could be. Also very terrifying, right? Do I want my wildest dreams? Does my wildest dreams want me? I don't know. But I'm not going to get there unless I start. And so I invite you to give yourself permission to dream this month and see where that takes you what do we have to lose i really at this point <laughs> like i can't get into my my business but what do we have to lose at this point you know it's a very important year for me next year this year 2024 um it feels like a really pivotal time for me and so i, I want to make sure i'm getting at it in the best with the best heart and taking a very heart-centered approach to it and i think that dreams have to be a part of that approach that's what I have to say this week, this month. Um, there may be bonus episodes or weeks between now and February, but I can give you all once a month. I got that for y'all, okay? Um, if you're listening to this on some website or some service or you are reading this, thank you. Um, this is truly just for me, but I'm happy to share <laughs> the overflow of the work that I'm trying to do. Um, on this little journey I have. So thank you for tuning in. If you're interested in other things that I do with the platform, with the blog, the, the sector of the internet, I have the socials linked wherever you're listening to this. <laughs> so you can find that. There are an Instagram page, there's other socials, there's a Discord community. Um, yeah, I'll be here. That's why, let's, let's wrap it up by talking about what bedside angel means. Because back to my strategy I don't fully know <laughs> either but something there's something really comforting about being bedside because I it's a very specific location but so many things can happen bedside and I think that's the 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 beauty I'm trying to kind of get at even with this project and projects that are going to fall within this name I guess but being bedside is very comfortable and it's safe, but it's also the space you need to dream, right? Like if you're gonna plan a, a, a tour around the world, you gotta start from your laptop, you know, and get the itinerary and plan it. You're not gonna just run out the door. You're gonna sleep on some things. You're gonna reflect. Something really powerful about being bedside because it's a place that's so familiar but also anything can happen when you fall asleep and that's something I think I need to do better at appreciating because I love my bed and I'm sure we all do but I love my bed but do I love what it does for me? do I appreciate my bed you know I love my bed do I appreciate it do I understand what it's doing um that's all for, th for this I'm gonna stop now but um yeah thank you for listening and I will catch you soon